Welcome to the first Sunday of the year. We are kicking it off today with something really special. 2022 off to a start. Yes, with our praise party, yes. which means we are going into service super heavy on worship and just remembering all that God has done in the year before and praising him in advance for all that we believe he's going to do in the year 2022. Right. So we're it's glad not just today. We also have first Wednesday yes. coming in a few days. Most important day, most important night of the month, first yes. Wednesday, because we get to come, we get to pray, we get to worship more, seek the Lord, yeah. all that kind of stuff. What better way to start the new year? No, no, but no better way. A lot of way. praise. We made it. 2021. We made it. We made it through. one thing. <laughs> it's the new year. It sure is. Start with worship. And then after that, next Sunday, we are kicking off a brand new sermon series, yep. as well as doing water baptism. Yep. So if you have not taken that step in your faith and you want to get water baptized, it's not too late to sign up. Find it on the Church Center app or go to projectchurch.com slash baptisms. You can sign up there. Yep, it'll be indoors week. too. It'll yes. be cold. Praise it'll be the nice Lord. and warm. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think that's all we got. Let's get this show started. Let's do it. Let's go. Welcome to Project Church. We're so glad you came to be with us today. No matter where you're at in life and faith, you're welcome here. If this is your first time, we'd love to connect with you. Simply text the word PROJECT to 97000. We'd love to send you home with a gift box. Here at Project Church, we believe generosity is our privilege and giving is a part of our obedience and worship to God. The easiest way to give is to download the Church Center app and set up a one-time or recurring gift. When you give, you enable more people to find life and freedom in Jesus locally and globally. Thank you for your generosity. If you're part of our online campus, you'll find all the links you need for prayer, community groups, or simply just connecting with us in the description of this stream. Thanks again for being here, and be sure to bookmark projectchurch.com to find out more ways you can connect and plug into the many communities we have here. Enjoy the rest of the service. We pray God speaks to you through the message and community here at Project Church. Let's go. Hey! 
Listen, I don't know a better thing to be doing for the first Sunday of the year than to be having a praise party. Just a couple of you, you excited? We're so excited because praise is the way we should start off every morning, every year, every season. This is the time to praise. You know, I don't know what your last year was like, but whether it's been mountaintop moments or valley moments, he's the same. So I think sometimes we come into this next season and we're, and this is, listen, how I am. I'm like, let's just be the new me. Let's do, be, let's do the better thing this year. Let's, let's be better. And I'm telling all of you, be better. But also, don't put so much pressure on yourself. When we praise God, we take the pressure off of ourselves. And he reminded me in Isaiah 43, 18, 19, remember not the former things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hey, before we praise today, before we worship, and we're gonna be singing a lot more songs this morning, we will give you an opportunity to sit down and rest your feet because you'll y'all be jumping. I know you will. Um, I want to just remind you that He's asking us to forget the former things and perceive the new thing that he is doing, the new thing that he's doing in this church, the new thing that he's doing in you. And you don't have to have a list of things you want to achieve here in order to have a great year. In order to have a great year, we have to be more reliant than ever before on the one who has never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. This isn't a moment to say, new year, new me, I'm going to worship more, I'm going to praise more. No, it's going to be, I'm going to rely on him more. What does that actually look like? I'm going to praise him more. I'm not going to make all the lists. You already made your list. I made all my lists, but I'm going to throw that on him and submit it to him and allow him to do the work. He's the same. So perceive the new. And when we perceive the new, we we are closer to taking and grabbing hold of the promises that he has for us. He makes a way in the wilderness and he has rivers. He makes rivers in the desert. So you're like, okay, I'm in a new year, new stuff, new things that you want me to experience, yes. But some of you might be thinking, it feels like the wilderness. It feels like things have run dry. Even in this new year, I'm trying to muster up the energy. Don't muster up the praise. Just focus on him. And set your eyes on his promises. And he will provide and make ways and give you direction that almost seem like they came out of nowhere. I believe that he's going to open up some new doors for you that you did not think that would ever be open for you. But just focus on his promise. So we're right now, let's lift our hands to heaven before we praise him some more. Praise is really surrendering all control letting go of everything from the past, forgetting the former so we can walk in the promises of his future. He has so much for you, Project Church. He has so much purpose for you to walk out. He has calling in this room. He has provision in this room that he wants you to walk into, not to make a way for yourself. He's going to make a way in the wilderness. He's going to make a way. He's going to provide, and he's going to give you rivers that never run dry. So Jesus, we say we surrender to you today. We give you everything, everything, every ounce of energy we give you. And we throw our praise and our plans on you. Have your way. Have your way, Jesus. Fill up this room right now. They're in postures to receive. Their hands are lifted high. Their hands are surrendering to you. Our hands don't have to do work in this next hour and a half. We don't have to do any work right now. He's going to do it all. He's doing it all. So Jesus, fill your people to overflowing. And we thank you in advance for the promises fulfilled. We thank you in advance for the provision. We thank you in advance for the direction. We thank you in Jesus' holy name. Come on, let's praise him. Let's praise him. Come on, let's celebrate a good God. Listen, I'm going to share this really quick for 13 seconds. Psalms uh, 150 says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his holy, excuse me, praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. 
Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of trumpet. Praise him with the harp. Praise him with the tremble and dance. Praise him with the strings and pipes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. I dare you to just start praising God because it is already done. His promises are yes and amen. Glorious are you, Lord. Glorious are you, Lord. Your name is not sinner. Your name is son. Your name is daughter. You are heir to the throne. Let's worship Jesus. was buried beneath yeah, my shame. Who could carry that guy of away? Yeah. It was my tomb. Oh, till I
gift is you are being an heir to God. You are a child of God. No matter if you're a singer, a dancer, a praiser, maybe you're super duper smart and good at math. But more than any of those gifts that God has given you, the greatest gift is when he gave his son. He gave us an opportunity to share in glory in heaven with him. So I dare you just for it one more time. I dare you to sing it. Come on. Come on. Clap those hands. Come on.
have now. His promise are yes and amen. He never changed his mind about you. Oh. How many believe that God is enough? Like simply, he's enough. Jehovah Jireh, you are enough. Let's go.
shout of praise in this place he's more than enough to meet you where you are I want you to be seated in this moment of worship I wanted you to hear about a story a testimony from someone in our church who saw God move in their life I got Mike and Julie Melisa here with me this morning come on make some noise for the Melisa's so if you didn't know, back in the summer, uh, we started praying for Julie. They were on vacation in Hawaii, and Julie got sick and got a call from Mike, and it was like, man, this is bad, dire circumstances. Julie got admitted to ICU, and so I just wanted you to hear a little from them about how God showed up in the situation. So Mike, so Mike talk to us about what God did yeah, you, in Julie's life. Good morning, church. Um, Yeah, just what Pastor Caleb was saying, we were having a great time on the Big Island. And then towards the end of our vacation, actually Julie started feeling not so good. We'll see how she goes, and we're almost home, so let's just play it safe, play quiet. But things got really bad really quick. And there was a point where uh, we woke up, and Julie, she couldn't even walk. Uh, There was really nothing there. So literally, I put her on my shoulders, and on one hand, I Googled emergency room. I didn't even know where I was going. She was just taking me there. And they said, what's wrong with her? I said, I don't know. It's up to you. We've got, we've got to figure it out. Emergency room. And they said, okay, leave her here. And so she was in the hospital for 18 days. Uh, 11 of those days, she was in the intensive care unit. And so I got to tell you guys, in the middle of those 18 days, in the middle of those 11 days in the ICU, you know, we got the call. We got, you know, we've been talking to the doctors and nurses the whole time. But, uh, you know, we got the call and they said, listen. We don't know what's making her sick. We've given her everything that we can give her. All the medicine, the steroids. She was already on, uh, you know, breathing machines. And they were ready to, uh, you know, put the tube down her throat, intubate. Um, And it was rough. It was a really rough time. And my daughter, Alex, she's here in the front row. Uh, She had already flown in. My oldest daughter had flown in because we knew things looked pretty rough. And... 
you know, on the way back from, you know, we couldn't see her, but we'd, we'd go to the church, or we'd go to the hospital, we'd pray. We saw her window because the nurses were so nice enough to put post notes to indicate where she was at. So we would, Alex and I, my daughter Rebecca, we'd prayer walk the hospital. We'd pray for the other, you know, patients and the doctors as well, but we just really prayed to God. And, you know, on the way back that evening, and Alex will tell you, you know, we just had this conversation. It's like, well, there's nothing we can do. The doctors have done any, everything. Um, we have to give her up to the Lord. And it wasn't a sign of retreat or we lost all hope. That was the only hope we had. Yeah. was Jesus. Okay, so we were all in. You know, we, we lightly throw around trust in the Lord every day but this was Lord we read we read about you in the scriptures and we're just going to put all trust in you and that's when I I called Pastor Caleb let him know what was going on and uh, we heard you guys praying for us in that service Pastor Caleb you know said let's we got to pray for Julie and Melissa in that family they're in Hawaii and we those prayers started rushing in and we actually read those prayers to Julie, when we were on our phone, you know, she couldn't speak. She had a lot of breathing machines on, but she heard your prayers, and the Lord heard our prayers. So, He is who He says He is. God's, and Julie's going to say something real quick here. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the God who heals, and He never changes. And I'll tell you right now, miracles, signs, and wonders did not stop. You're looking at one right now. I believe at that time... God said, no, I want her at my praise party. This is the day. Hey, come on. Come on. Yeah, um, I just want to say that uh, I, is this on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I was doing a, a lot of praying and listening. What got me by was also listening to uh, a lot of worship music. Um, you know the nurses would come in and I, I would just keep it on it just you know it, it just it just really helped me um, but I want to thank everybody uh, in this room who has prayed for me um, I may not know you but um I just really want to thank you. It just really touched my heart. Thank you. Yeah, the moment that we said, God, it's all you, the next day our fever broke. So I just want to let you guys know. Yeah, I believe that Julie is a walking, talking miracle right here on this stage. And I wanted us to see it because I know sometimes we pray and we see a list on the screen of prayers. And then there's some praise reports. And I know Julie went from prayer to like a praise report, but you didn't really get it. You know, like that night that Mike called me, it was like the doctor said, there's nothing else we can do. We have to intubate her. And Julie told me that she told him, you are not intubating me. (laughs) Because she's like, I know what happens when you intubate someone. She said, you are not intubating me. And it was that night that the fever broke when the church was praying, when we were believing. And uh, at the moment of greatest need, How many know that's when God always shows up? And so I just wanted this to be a faith declaration for you today that you would see a walking, talking miracle. Because we know that some of you in this room need a miracle today. And so right now we're going to continue in worship. And I'm going to invite the prayer team forward. And I want to invite you to come forward if you need a miracle in your life. Maybe you need healing. Maybe you need financial provision. Maybe you need a job. Maybe you need a touch on your relationship, on your marriage. Maybe you're in bondage to sin and you need freedom in this place. We've been declaring he's the God of breakthroughs. We've been declaring he's a provider. And so today in this place, I believe that God is going to move like we haven't seen him. Uh, He's going to move in a special way in this room. He already is. And there's an atmosphere of faith. And how many know when there's an atmosphere of faith, that's when God can do what he wants to do. And so would you stand your feet with me across this place? I'm going to invite our prayer team forward. And I want us by faith right now to believe for the miracles that you want to see. So Lord, right now we ask for miracles in this place. Lord, as the prayer team is making their way forward and as people begin to come, I want to ask that right now we would step up 
asking for prayer with faith that you can do the impossible that you can move where it seems like there is no way god you are the way maker god you are the chain breaker and so in this place we declare faith in this place faith rise belief rise hope rise god miracles may they come to pass right now in this place in your name jesus amen let's continue in worship if you need a miracle in your life you need a touch come right now let's pray together church Trusting in what's sinking, these boats weren't built for me. I'm done drifting on the water of insecurity. In the noise and the distractions, in the storms of arguing, I hear your voice calling.
You're here right now. You're here. Your presence is here. We feel you, God. Thank you, Lord. All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing this songs as I often do but every song must end and you never do so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again come on all hands raised all over this place cause all that I have is a hallelujah God is here right now. His Holy Spirit is here. So come on, church, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song, cause you got a lion inside of those, get up and praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, we worship you, oh, come on, my soul. oh don't you get shy on me, lift up your song, cause you got a
so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a thank you, God. Yeah. Lift your hands, church. Give him some praise in this place right now. Lift your voices. Clap your hands. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all, Jesus. You can be seated in this place, in this attitude of worship. Chrissy and I just want to share really quick with you. I know that God is doing something in this place. I believe that miracles just happened. I believe that breakthrough just took place. I believe that chains were just broken. In fact, I was down here worshiping, and I felt the Lord say that there's been a spirit of addiction on many of the men of this house, a spirit of addiction to pornography on the men of this house. And God told me that I was supposed to speak against that in this place today. And so right now, I want to call out the men 
and I want to call us to a place of purity, of righteousness, of holiness, but that can't come in your own strength. Because how many know you've tried? You've tried to break this off yourself, but right now God wants to break it off of you. So by faith, I need some men to receive this. Jesus, right now, by faith, we receive the chains breaking of the spirit of addiction that has been upon so many in this place. God, we ask for pure eyes. God, we ask that we would be able to refrain and restrain from looking at that which we are not to look at. God, that we would honor our wives. We would honor you, single men in the house. Married men, we would honor you and our wives. So Lord, right now I pray for freedom in this place. I pray for freedom in this place. I declare freedom in this place. Break chains. God, get accountability for these men that need it. God, may they talk to someone after this service. They've never talked about it. There's too much shame, but God, break the shame off them right now. Lord, you are not a God of shame. You're a God uh, of conviction, but not condemnation. And so in this place, we walk in the conviction of the purity you're calling us to, but not the condemnation that the enemy would try to put on us. So Lord, right now, freedom in this place. God, freedom, purity, released in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you for letting me do that. I feel like today, men, I know this is some of you, and so I've got to challenge you on the, on the way out of here or later today or tomorrow, you need to talk to someone. You've been walking in the shame of it, the guilt of it, and, and you haven't got that person, a, a man. And it can't be your wife. It's got to be somebody else to walk alongside of you in this. And so I just want to challenge you to get someone right away because God is calling us to a higher level of righteousness, of purity, of holiness. He needs a holy church, a purified church, so he can release what he wants to release in this city through us. So can we do this, church? Ladies, pray for your men, all right? It's not easy in this world. And yet I believe God is calling us to a higher standard. So I'm excited for what God's doing. Um, Chrissy, I want to share real quick today uh, just a, a quick scripture and, and encouragement for us. But before we do that, thank you for coming to the praise party. Come on. Uh, the first Sunday of 2022. I can't believe it's 2022. And uh, man, I'm just thankful to lead this church along with my beautiful wife. Uh, we both turned 40 this last year. And so it's a, it's a, bless, it's a blessing to enter another decade. But man, I want to invite you next Sunday We are kicking off an all-new series on the favor of God. I've never taught a series on this. We've never done a series like this, but God uh, dropped into my spirit uh, in December that we would kick off this year talking about the favor of God. And Jesus actually in Luke chapter 4, he opens up a scroll. He's in in the synagogue and he asks for a scroll and he opens it up and he turns it to Isaiah. And he says, the Lord has appointed me. The Lord has appointed me to preach good news to the poor. Liberty for the captives, the opening of sight for the blind eyes, and to declare the year of the Lord's favor. And so I believe this year God is declaring a year of favor on this house, on your life, on your families. But how many know favor is not always what we think it is? And so next week I'm kicking off this series talking about what favor feels like. Because it doesn't always feel like you think it's going to feel. Sometimes it feels like an attack. Sometimes it feels like, like a storm, but it may actually be the favor of God that he's walking you into. And so this series, five-week series, you're not going to want to miss it. Next week, bring someone with you. The favor of God is going to be incredible. And the other thing, check this out. The other thing, miracle offering. End of the year, miracle offering. Chrissy didn't know where I was going. Miracle offering, you guys have been giving. We set a goal of $55,000. We're going to give $10,000 to Convoy of Hope, $10,000 to uh, City of Refuge, $10,000 to Project Rescue, $5,000 to a couple other organizations I can't think of right now. But we set a goal of $55,000 by the end of the year. And so I want to update you as of the end of the year, we have now hit $89,000. So the week after... The Miracle Offering Sunday, people were asking me, like, how far are we from the goal? I want to help. And I'm like, oh, we already blew by it. Come on. And uh, so thank you, church, for your faithfulness in giving. Uh, 2021 was our best year of giving ever. 
And uh, December was the biggest month of giving in the history of our church. And so I just want to say thank you. Come on, give it up for you, for God. How many know that gener- generosity is contagious? And I believe he is raising up a generous church because we're able to do more uh, in what God is calling us to do. So I want to read real quick from 1 Kings, and then we're going to talk about the voice of the Lord uh, for just a couple minutes. And so I want to read starting in verse number 11. Elijah is the prophet of God. He's just taken out the prophets of Baal. I don't know if you remember this story, but basically he has a, a showdown with the prophets of Baal. And he's like, you call down fire from your God. I'll call down fire from my God. And, and they try and God doesn't show up. And Elijah makes fun of him. He's like, maybe your God's on the toilet. Like, no lie. That's what he says. It's awesome. You, the Bible's so good. You guys know this? Uh, there's all kinds of stuff. He was the first trash talker, talker in the history of the Bible, the original Mamba mentality, okay? And... Uh, and so he's talking trash to them, and then he calls down fire, burns up the sacrifices, and then it burns up all the prophets of Baal, wipes them out. And so right after this moment of victory, he goes into a state of depression. How many know that oft, often after great moments of victory, we, ex- we experience the greatest moments of discouragement in our lives? And so he has this great moment of victory, and then the next thing you know, he's hiding in a cave asking God to kill him because he's discouraged, he's defeated, Because now uh, a king and the spirit of Jezebel is trying to kill him. And he's feeling sorry for himself. And he goes and he hides in the cave. And here's what God says in verse number 11. He says, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. Everybody say whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? I believe that today God wanted us to challenge you to hear the voice of the Lord, because I think there's many in this room who've been hiding in a cave. You've been in a season of discouragement, of defeat, maybe of depression, of anxiety, and you've been hiding in a cave, and you think you have nothing good to give, nothing that God can use. You don't have any purpose. God doesn't have a plan for your life. And God is saying to you what he was saying to Elijah. He's saying, what are you doing here? God was saying, Elijah, get up out the cave. Because I have anointed you for a time such as this. And I believe God wanted to speak to us in this place today. Too many of us have been hiding in the cave, stuck in what we feel like is our failure, of what we feel like is this spirit or season of discouragement. And God wanted to say to you, what are you doing? Get out of the cave. I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. I have my hand upon you. I have anointed you for a time such as this. God is calling his church out of the cave and out into the world to be the people that he's calling us to be. So the voice of the Lord, sometimes it's a whisper. I know I'm yelling, but the voice of the Lord today is calling us. He's saying, what are you doing here? This is not what I've destined you for. You are not meant to be a person, a Christian in hiding. You are meant to come out of the cave and be a light that shines bright like a city on a hill. That's what God is calling us to, church. And so... That's a good word, Pastor Caleb. Love you. I love you too. Um, I debated talking about what I'm about to talk about just because I felt like a broken record about year 2021. And then Caleb's like, no, people actually connect with this. And so I think that in some ways, last year, 2021, was a year of feeling like Elijah. And even though it was public, oh goodness, I didn't cry this much in first service something in the room. It's you guys. I think God wants you to hear this. 2021 felt like I was in a cave. There's times when you can be in a room full of people and on a stage and on a platform and you're still hiding. So I kind of felt like that was my year and there were moments where God is saying, was saying, my husband was saying, what are you doing here? And I felt like that was a moment for me to dig in and incline my ear towards him. And I'm not here to just say, it gets better once you start a new year. 
because that's what we try to do in our own strength. We try to make a list of goals to almost forget about the past. But God is saying for us to lean into him. I couldn't have made it through 2021 without leaning in. And honestly, there were moments where it was like, we are going through the greatest victories our church has ever seen. My 30s, I just turned 40. He reminded you, and I'm going to remind you again. I just turned 40 last month. And the 30s were the best years of my life. And in that moment where we, we experienced promise here at Project Church, in relationships, in this building, Like we experienced so many good things and right at the tip of victory, there was a moment of discouragement. And all I wanted to do was blame the enemy and blame other people. And God said, no, come close, daughter. Come close. Some of us need to come closer to him. And what do, what do I want to tell you? Just get closer to Jesus? No, the way I had to get closer to Jesus, the only way I knew how was to incline my ear to his voice. And you're like, well, is he going to do what he did for Elijah and whisper? Are you, are you waiting to hear a whisper? Or some of you like, I've been waiting for him to speak. You're like, I don't hear him. How do we hear him? We hear him in the word, in the scriptures. He is speaking to us every moment. Every moment we open up the word, there's a moment for me where in the beginning of last year, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this like 30 day reading plan where I read the whole Bible and it's called the shred. If anybody is looking for a planning or a Bible plan, reading plan, it's called the shred. I'm doing it this year. Um, 30 days. I I say, God bless you. You go for that. The whole Bible in 30 days. Uh, You got to be special to do that. I tried to do it last year. And it took me months. And to be honest, I didn't finish. Anyway, um, (laughs) just being honest. But sometimes I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. In the new year, I'm going to read the word. I'm going to be in his word. And and then we make it another achievement plan, another goal on our list of things to conquer. And God's saying, I don't want you to conquer anything. I want you to commit to me once again. So this morning... I want to remind you of Psalm 119, 105. The word is a lamp into our feet and the light into our path. When we hide his word in our heart, we will not sin against God. When we hide his word in our heart, we will not get off the path. When we hide his word in our heart, we won't chase after the wrong things. When we hide his word in our heart, we know who we are. When we hide the word of God in our hearts, we are headed towards his promises. There's promises all over this room that have not yet been fulfilled, and some people are waiting. And you're like, I need, to, I need to read the Bible more. Okay, I got you. No, 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 you don't need to do more. You need to get in the Word. And you're like, how do I get in the Word? Write down a scripture. You don't have to do the shred, okay? But maybe one scripture is all you need. One syllable, syllable or utterance from the Lord is power, powerful enough to change your life, yeah. even if it is just one scripture a day one scripture a day write down the scripture observe the scripture really read it apply that how is god asking you to apply that and then pray over it soap my dad has done this for years where it's like writing down a strip scripture observing what the scripture is saying applying the scripture to a situation in your life and then praying over that scripture soap so simple one verse is enough any whisper from god is enough for a lifetime you don't have to do yeah. the shred you may not be a shred of me, shredded by me. Oh, okay, I messed that up. It's all right. One whisper from heaven can change the trajectory of this okay. year. Let's incline our ear towards him. So here's what I want to do. We're going to sing one last song to close this praise party. Uh, obviously, this was a different Sunday than we've ever done with more worship and time and prayer. Uh, but I really do feel like there's maybe somebody in this room that connects with this story of Elijah and you're here and you say, Caleb, that's me. Maybe the first group of you, you've been running from God. You've turned your back on God. Maybe you've never had relationship with God. You've, you've found a cave to hide in, but the voice of God, the whisper of God is calling to you in this place. 
And today, you need to come out of the cave and into the loving arms of a Savior who loved you so much, he went to the cross and died a death that we should have died to take the sins of us upon himself. So with heads bowed, eyes closed in this place, if that's you, you don't know Jesus, you've been running from Jesus, you turned your back on Jesus, you never have a relationship with Jesus, you've been hiding in a cave from Jesus, but today you want to come into the arms of the Savior. I want you to lift your hand right now. Go ahead, if that's you. Put your hand up right now in this place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hands are still going up. Yeah. Come on. Praise God. You can put them down. I see another hand in the back. You can put those hands down. I think there's another group in here. You say, Caleb, I have a relationship with Jesus, but honestly, I've been like Chrissy. I've been in a cave season. And I hear you saying, I hear God saying, what are you doing here? It's time to come out of the cave and to step in to the destiny, the purpose, the call that God has on your life. If that's you, you've been hiding in the cave from what God has for you. I want you to, right now in faith, raise your hand. Say, I'm coming out of the cave. Come on, put your hand up. Yes, hands going up all around the room. Would everyone in this room repeat this prayer after me? Say this with me. Say, Jesus, today I confess that I'm a sinner, but I'm saved by grace, not of my works, so that I could boast, but of the work that you did, my Savior, Jesus, you did on the cross. Today, I declare, I'm coming out of the cave. I'm running into your arms. Lead me, use me, take me, and do with me what you will. I'm yours, Jesus. And I'm committing wholeheartedly to the call, to the purpose, to the destiny that you have on my life. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet, church. Give God a shout of praise in this place. And let's sing one last song as a declaration that in 2022, we're not staying in the cave. We're walking in the purposes that God has for us. Come on, church. Lift your voices in this place. So come on, oh don't you get shy on me, lift up your song, cause you got a lion inside of those bones, get up and praise the Lord, come on church, lift that up, say come on, say come on guys, yeah, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song, cause you got a lion.
Give it up for Justin, Alicia, the worship band. They, they set this up perfect for me because I'm going to talk about generosity and giving. And you can be seated, if you can, just for a minute as we close this out. You heard Pastor Caleb already reported we had an incredible month of December, our biggest month in giving yet. And our theme for 2021 was what? Do you remember? Overflow. I still got my overflow bracelet on. Our theme, it looks like, for 2022 is favor of God. And we believe we are experiencing God's favor here at Project Church. So thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving and your support. What do we say? Generosity is what? Our privilege here at Project Church. We don't have to give. We get to give. Uh, just a, a portion of the first fruits of what God has blessed us with. And you don't give to Project Church, you give through Project Church. So uh, there's a number of ways you can give. You can give on the Church Center app, you can give on our website. And if you're in the room, you can give. There's a box in the back of the room if you came prepared to do that this morning as you leave. So, wow. Are you ready for 2022? Here we go. I want to tell you about a couple a couple things that are coming up. But before we do that, we want to welcome our first timers to Project Church. If you're here for the very first time, you're our VIP. We want you to text the word PROJECT to 97000. And then as you leave the room, go out those back doors and make a left. Go over in the corner of the lobby. We have a couple gifts for you. A free t-shirt and a coupon to our coffee shop. So give it up to, for our VIPs this morning. Welcome home. Hey, who's excited for 2022? Yeah. Me too. Me too. It's going to be a good year. And we should start off just like today. If you enjoyed today, there's an extension of that happening on Wednesday. Right. It's our term. It's our night called First Wednesdays. If you haven't been, this is what you need to do. Get in your car on Wednesday sometime around 7 o'clock and get here yeah. because we set the tone for the entire month. And this one's going to be special. We're declaring words over the year. So make sure you're here Wednesday at 7 p.m. We're just going to continue the praise party praise right party. into Wednesday night. All year night. long. All, you, year, all long. year long, yeah. All right. So also, we want to remind you that this Saturday is second Saturday of the month. And as you know, second Saturday of the month is what? Hope, Hope Day. Day. So you can sign up to be a part of uh, serving this Saturday from 9 to noon at the YOLO Food Bank. So go to the Church Center app and join us for that this Saturday. And the last thing before we go. Uh, anybody just, you're, you're sure, you're positive, you're thinking about this year, and you're like, I gotta have a good year. Gotta have, this is me. Okay, so listen, next Sunday, water baptism is happening. Some people are raising their hands. Good for you, me too. I need a good year. We're doing water baptism next Sunday. So if you need to do that, if you have never done that, maybe you want to rededicate your life to Christ and, and take that step, next Sunday is your time to do that. All you gotta do, go on the Church Center app, register for that. And at the same time, if you're like new to the church, you're like, I gotta figure out what this church is all about. Listen, it doesn't get weird, and we're gonna tell you how cool it really is. Go on the Church Center app, register for the Blueprint course, and hey, maybe on Sunday, it can be like the Super Bowl Sunday. You can get baptized and go to the Blueprint course and just call it a weekend, all right? So make sure you do that, Church Center app. Other than that, we love you, Project Church. We'll see you on Wednesday night for First Wednesdays. God bless you guys. We'll see you yeah, there. and we want to remind them that if you'd still time. like to come forward for prayer, you can do that. Before you go that way, come this way. Our prayer partners will be up here in the front. Happy New Year. God bless. We'll see you soon.